Hello everyone and welcome to Ian's Bricks. I'm Ian and today I want to talk about the uh, Lego Fair that I recently attended, the Bournemouth Brick Festival. Uh, so it was a local event to me, around about 20 minutes drive away, which is, which is for something like that is excellent, just being on your doorstep. So really, really pleased I was able to take part in this event. Um, and uh, the event is, is run by the people called Brick Festival. They have quite a few of them over the UK uh, and there certainly is a lot more of these Brick Festivals popping up all over the place all around the UK, uh, as well as in England, they're in Scotland and Wales now as well, so uh, if you sort of live in, near to a large city, have a look at the Brick West Festival website because there are plenty of these uh, Brick Festivals around nowadays, so uh, check out your local area, there's probably bound to be one near you uh, somewhere this year. Obviously if you're not based in the UK, there are other, other Brick Fairs around, I'm sure there are, but maybe more, more difficult to, uh, uh, to, to sort of find in your local area, but certainly in the UK we are a little bit sport for choice at the moment with brick festivals but it's great for me as it gives me an opportunity to sell some of the lego investment sets that i've been buying over the past well many years to be quite honest and uh, so i just thought i'd go through how the day went uh, what was good what was bad what sold what didn't sell uh, sell and uh, basically talk about some of the the actual um, costs and prices that I, I managed to get for some of my items um, so uh, first of all uh, the event itself uh, it was held um, in February of 2023, just last weekend, last Sunday for me, um, and uh, as I say, 20 minutes drive away for me, which is fantastic. Um, tables at that particular event, they cost uh, £50 per seller's table, which I had two of those, so it was £100 um, for those uh, tables. Uh, and then I also had a backing table as well. Um, and uh, you can either put the table at the right at the back of the table that you've got, or as I did, I put it behind me, and that sort of created a space I could put my larger sets at the back of the table, uh, and then my smaller sets and, and things were at the front. Uh, and it was just a, a very, very uh, well-attended event. Lots of people came in. We opened at 10 o'clock. Loads of people came in. I mean, that first hour, I, I'd sold a lot of stuff. Uh, it was kind of non-stop for me, which is fantastic, which is what you want, really. Uh, so the Brick Festival people, they're very, very good at advertising their events, getting people through the doors, uh, which is what you want um, as a Lego seller. Uh, and there were other things as well. It wasn't just people selling Lego. There were um, uh, events uh, to do. There were, like, tables of bricks that you could go and build things in for the kids. Um, there were um, models that people had brought in which some of them were amazing uh, so loads and loads of stuff to do it wasn't just people like myself selling selling Lego but there certainly were quite a few people selling lots of different things from minifigures to seal sets like I sell um, so I can I take all my stuff in my, my car I can get a reasonable amount of stuff in there and that's another reason why I only have two tables I think any more than two tables I wouldn't be able to um, I, I would need a bigger vehicle basically to uh, to take more Lego uh, to cover the three tables if I got say three tables for example uh, and also I think having more than two tables would be quite difficult to manage um, uh, there was myself and my partner and, and we basically both managed the table I can do most of it myself but there's just occasional times when we get busy when I need a little bit of help uh, so it's always nice to have somebody else there to help out um, at those particular times so sets wise, so I took quite a lot of sets with me, I've got a list of them here with all the different sets so when I go to these events I literally have a list of all the sets that I'm taking with me so I've got a record of what I've got. Some of the sets I take more than one of, especially for smaller items like poly bags or, or some of the smaller boxes, I'll take more than one of them um, and I'll have all the prices down, uh, what, what, um, what I've got them on display for because I put all prices on all of my items so I know how much they are um, and also I have a little list for myself as well as what things cost because you do occasionally get people bartering and wanting to barter I don't mind that it happens uh, but uh, I mean sometimes I say no so I have said no. I did say no to a couple of people at the start of the event they sort of wanted says oh how much are you willing willing to go on that I said well you know I've literally we just opened and uh, and if I can sell it for that price I will so I, I do say no to people, I don't always say yes, uh, but certain people, as long as they're not too cheeky, then I don't mind a little bit of a, a discount, especially if they're buying more than one thing as well. So you, you play that bit, but so most people are quite happy to pay the prices that I put on these sets, which makes me think that I'm obviously doing something right in actually pricing up my items in the first place. I do tend to look at uh, sold prices on eBay. Uh, I use that as a sort of a guide as to what I'm gonna charge for things, because you, you ultimately, uh, yes, I could price everything really, really high and potentially make a lot of money on each individual sets but 
I ultimately also want to, to make quite a bit of money, that's why I'm going to these events. So for me I want to price things about right, so I'm going to sell things, uh, not to rip people off. I mean I'm, I'm, I'm literally going for the market value for these particular sets and yes, some people might say that some of my prices are a little bit high, but that's kind of the going rate for these sets uh, on eBay and other, other, other sites as well. So that's why I charge those and that. So I do quite a lot of research before I go uh, to try and figure out how much I want to charge for particular sets. But there's, there's always a little bit of leeway in there just in case somebody wants to give me a little bit less. But as I say, I can't say no sometimes. Um, so let's talk about the, the large sets that I sold. So in total, I've got some, uh, some notes here. Um, uh, altogether, I sold over uh, 90 individual items. Um, about 20 of those were sort of poly bags and small minifigure blister packs. That meant around about 70 sets were sort of box sets. And yes, some of the box sets can be quite small, up to the really large ones like the modular buildings. But yeah, 70 box sets, I think, is is, uh, is quite a good, uh, good sort of turnover on these things. Obviously, I did, there was quite a few things that I didn't sell. But the majority of, of stuff, uh, I think percentage-wise, I probably sold, looking at my list... Yeah, I probably sold around about um, maybe two-thirds of all of the box items that I had took with me on the day. So that was really, really good. So the, the biggest thing that I did sell uh, was the uh, 10197, which is the uh, Fire Brigade, one of the modular buildings. Uh, that set I'd had, I bought retail years ago. That was 99.99 when I bought it in the UK. I'll put some... Uh, prices in dollars as well at the bottom, US dollars, just for those of you that aren't based in the UK, to give you an idea of the types of prices that I was buying things and selling things for. Um, but I actually sold this for £499, uh, which I think is, is quite good. It's a, a very tidy profit on that one. Uh, but again, this is something I've had for many, many years. Um, I've had a couple of these at previous Lego sales and managed to sell them as well. And again, the, the price of that I think I probably got just about right. So uh, really, really pleased to sell that. Um, I also sold 10233, which is the Horizon Express, and I managed to sell that for £250. Um, and again, that's a set that I've had for many, many years. Uh, that was one of the sets I think that I had at my parents um, uh, up in Newcastle upon Tyne, and I picked that up um, last year or the year before. Uh, I think the original purchase price on that was around about £80. So again, quite a nice, tidy profit on that. But again, that's something I've had for many, many years and have, have had to store away for quite a while. Um, something that's a little bit more recent was 75274, which is the T uh, Star Wars TIE Fighter Pilot Helmet. Now, I actually had this on sale, uh, on, on display for £250, uh, but I ended up selling it for £220. I, I gave the guy 10% discount, which I thought was fair. Um, these tend to go for around about £250 to £270 at the moment. They are still increasing in value, so I didn't want to put, put too much of a discount on that. But at the end of the day, I'm quite happy. I've sold one of those. I do have another one, but I'll probably not sell that for a while. I'll hang on to that for a bit longer. Uh, original purchase price on that was £55. So for a couple of years, uh, shame I didn't get more of these, but yeah, very, very big. Um, I think it's just over £300, 300%, sorry, in profit, uh, £170 uh, in, in actual monetary value. So really, really nice to sell that. Uh, the next big item that I sold was 10218, which is the modular building pet shop. Uh, I sold this for £240. Again, I think that was quite a reasonable price. Um, I took this to my last Lego fair and it didn't sell. Uh, and I think I maybe had it on at maybe 250, maybe 260. So I think I might have lowered the price on this one a little bit. Uh, but ultimately, it did sell this time. Um, profit on this one, I basically uh, just doubled my money on this. Uh, I've had this for a few years. I think this came out about six or seven years ago. So again, quite a long time uh, with origi original retail price of £120. So um, not the greatest sort of profit on that one but it's still doubling your money and again I managed to sell it at the end of the day so really really pleased about that. Um, next on the list again is a, is a more up-to-date set which was 75276 the Star Wars Stormtrooper helmet and I had this on at £140 and it sold at that price so really pleased for that so a little bit like the TIE Fighter helmet since these have retired these uh, Star Wars helmets have been really really popular not quite as uh, much of an increase as the TIE Fighter helmet but this this uh, Stormtrooper helmet was, was a lot easier to get at the time and to buy and even though I think the recommended retail price on this set was 50 
£55. I actually got this particular set from Amazon for £33.77. Uh, so for me that was £106.23 uh, profit or 314%. So huge profit on that. And again, I wish I'd got more of those. I've got uh, one or two more back at home here. Uh, but uh, but yeah, nice to kind of sell that. And there was quite a lot of... That sold quite early from what I remember. Um, so again, really pleased to sell that one for, for a nice profit. And again, quite a short amount of time I've had to hang on to that to get that kind of um, profit. Next up, I sold 10220, the VW camper van, the original T1 camper van. I sell this for £145. Um, I've got quite a few of these still. I think I've sold around about three at different Lego fairs now. And the price, every time I sell them, I, have to, I can sell them for a little bit more because they are starting to finally increase in value. Um, there still was a, a recommended retail price when I bought this. I think I bought it for £80. So quite a high price point for this. £65 in profit, so it's not bad. Um, 80 80% uh, in actual profit terms so that's uh, that's okay but nice to get to sell that because it's, it's, it's a decent little set uh, but uh, yeah it's taken a while to increase so again I probably had this set for well over maybe nine or ten years I think so been hanging on to that one for quite a while. Um, next on the list is uh, 7848 the uh, City Toys R Us truck um, this was again from around about seven or eight years ago I think so I've had this one for quite a while. Um, I saw this for £99. Now the interesting thing about this set, I'd previously taken it to three other Lego fairs and it hadn't sold. I had had it at a higher price. Um, I'm sure I think I went first time and I tried to sell it for 120 It didn't sell. Tried to sell it for 110 It didn't sell. So I marked it down to 99 and finally it sold this time. So you have to persevere sometimes and, and I don't mind lowering the price of things at different Lego fairs um, if they're not selling. I mean you sort of get a hint, well okay, no, nobody is prepared to pay that for that so it's obviously not worth that so I did reduce that a little bit uh, but it's still more than double what I paid for even though it was a while ago a £59 profit on that particular set which was actually 147% uh, uh, profit so still quite a good uh, uh, amount of profit on that one. Next on the list um, similar thing actually 60051 was the Lego City Train this was a little bit more recent I think I got this about three or four years ago uh, and again I'd taken this to previous Lego fairs I think last time I had it on at 130 it hadn't sold so this I've taken this to a few events hadn't sold so I lowered the price to 120 pounds and again I sold this one quite early so I was really really pleased to sell this early I think at the time uh, this had a recommended retail price of around about 100 pounds so it wasn't far over the recommended retail price but this is a set that I managed to get at the time on Amazon and I got it for 65 pounds so for me that meant 55 pound in profit uh, which was around about 85 percent so Again, not too bad, not the greatest, but uh, this is why it's always important if you are buying Lego for Lego investing to get a good price in the first place. It's all right playing recommended retail price, but that can eat into your profits. So nice to sell quite another, another one of those larger sets. Um, some of the other sets I sold was 21037, the Lego Architecture House. I sold that for £90. Not much of a profit on that one, but I think I doubled on that one because I bought those for, for £40, £45. A um, couple of Harry Potter sets that I sold, 75947, the Harry Potter's um, Hagrid's Hut. I sold that for £70, which I'd originally bought that only two or three years ago for £33. So again, I got it less than recommended retail price and I got a tidy profit on on that and I also sold 75956 the Quidditch match uh, I sold that for £55 and I'd originally bought that for £22 um, and actually yeah, it was actually uh, one lady that actually bought both of those she literally I saw her wandering over to the store she literally picked both of them up and was like there you go, I'll have both of those. I'm like, okay. And it's really, really nice when that happens because obviously people want these sets and, and I've obviously priced them right and the people are willing to pay, pay that kind of money for them straight off without even sort of bartering or bargaining. So really, really nice when that kind of happens. Um, I also sold 21047, the uh, Architecture Las Vegas. Uh, this I sold for £65. And this had a recommended retail price at the time of £35. So only £30 profit on this one, but 85%, so that's not 
bad and I think I've only had that for about four or four years maybe so not too long on that one um, I also sold uh, two of 21314 which is the Ideas Tron Legacy uh, it was quite interesting this particular sale because uh, there were two guys that I'd seen them at the stall a couple of times and they'd come back to the stall and this guy eventually was like yes I'll have the Tron set and I was selling this, these at £55 and these when I bought them were £30 so not much of a profit only £25 profit but it's still 83% so not bad um, so um, as he was uh, as he was buying it I said oh I said I've got another another, another one of those which I did and uh, and I sort of said okay, I can fill the gap straight away because when, whenever I sell something on my table I like to fill the gap with something else put something else in there so that there's not a space and so I sort of literally put this other this second tron set that I had down and um, it says oh you know what I'm going to buy buy this and then he bought something else as well so really really good so I did a little bit of uh, I'm obviously a good salesman maybe uh, so that was really really pleasing to sell two of those again not the hugest profits on those but nice little sets again I've had those for a few years for about uh, maybe five years or so so they've not really increased greatly in value but still nice to make a little bit of profit on that and then the final large set over 50 pounds that I sold uh, was 76193 it's the Marvel Guardianship so this is a set which is currently still available I tend to sell sets that are retired or hard to get hold of but the reason I was selling this is because I actually bought them quite recently uh, around Christmas time and when they were delivered they were unfortunately not delivered in a very very decent very good state the boxes were, were had a lot of sort of storeware shelfware on them they were sealed still but they didn't look the greatest so I thought you know what I just want to kind of sell these off now and get rid of them uh, and I actually paid I think I, I paid 64 pounds for them these retail normally in the UK at 140 so I got a really good price in the first place and then because I complained to the um, place where I got them from I then got another 10% off so I actually sold this for 75 pounds so profit wise it was only 17 pounds and not a huge profit for me 30% not the greatest but I was just quite happy to sell that and actually the guy that got it was I think was really really pleased because at the end of the day he's probably not that bothered about the box as much as I am uh, but he's got himself a decent big set there for £75 well under recommended retail price he actually said to me says oh guy over there's got it for, for a lot more than almost twice as much as you as you have I said well you know you, you are aware that the box is a little bit scuffed and whatever and he said yeah that's fine I put a note on the label saying that was, there was some box wear on it and he was absolutely fine with it so he got a bargain I managed to sell it so uh, everyone wins basically so they're all my big sets over £50 now obviously I sold a lot of other sets as well so there were around about 70 boxes that I sold all together so that's just a taste of some of the other higher end ones over £50 um, one thing that did sell well were my promos now I always take a uh, a lot of promos with me now these are the sets that I get for free whenever I buy from lego.com or sometimes if you buy from other affiliate links and things like that you can get some free lego sets uh, and some of these are quite nice now price wise I think I priced these all between around about I think nine pounds was some of the cheapest cheaper ones I was selling all the way up to about 35 for, uh, for some of the, the more expensive promos uh, but of course remember that I got all of these for free and yes I was having to buy Lego and other things um, to sort of get these promos in the first place uh, but altogether I sold 27 promo sets, box promo sets uh, and made a total or, or took a total of £497 so that's pretty much all profit uh, yeah there's some credit card fees when people pay on credit card but that, that's pretty good for that so um, yeah, these promo sets always do quite well. I do tend to take promo sets that are as soon as soon as I've got them really I don't tend to hang on to these particularly long simply because they are such a good money spinner and they do sell well I didn't sell all of them there was a few of them I, I bought home with me but that's fine but yeah they did did pretty well so uh, you know as I say as I'm buying Lego from lego.com especially always look out for free gifts and promos because uh, at Lego fairs like this things like this do sell really well I think uh, sets around about the 20 to 30 to 40 pound mark if you price them right can can actually do really really well because a lot of people go into these events maybe don't want to be spending 500 a thousand pounds on on a particular set it's a lot of money to spend but they're more than happy to pick up you know two three four of the 20 or 30 pound sets so just kind of bear that in mind if ever you're doing a lego fair that uh, you know don't just take large items uh, the big the big value items yeah they're great 
take a real sort of good variety take some sort of medium sized sets some smaller sets as well because as I say that the, the, the smaller sets tend to do quite well and although you have to sell more of them you know yeah if I'm selling these promos for 25 30 pounds each time which some of them that's what they're worth and that's what they sell for and that's all sort of profit for you so they they always do well the promos so they they're quite good and um, poly bags I took quite a few poly bags this time um and uh, they did okay I only sold about 20 of them to be fair they weren't a particularly good money spinner for me this time um some of the poly bags I'd actually bought this time so they weren't all freebies and promos which some of them were uh, but again it's nice to have those and people like to have a sort through them and I did sell a few of them which is fine I always like to have the poly bags there again it's quite nice you know you get little kids coming up and they just get a set and it's worth like three or four pounds and and that's fine it's not going to make you a lot of money but it just gets a bit of interest on your stall as well and people whilst they're searching through quite often they'll be looking looking through and then they'll see other stuff on your stall as well so that's another reason why I have poly bags um, other sets I want to talk about that uh, that uh, finally sold were the IKEA set. So I bought. Uh, you may have seen a video a couple of years ago now that um, my uh, an IKEA in Reading, which is quite a drive away for me. Um, I managed to buy uh, loads of these uh, IKEA sets, which they had on sale for a pound. They normally retail around about eighteen pounds, but for whatever reason, Reading IKEA had ordered far too many of these, and I snapped up. I think I bought eighty four in total. And since I've been doing all these brick festivals, I've pretty much taken quite a few of them every time I go. And they've always been quite well. They generate a lot of interest. And I was selling them for £5. I could probably have sold them for more, but actually I didn't mind because people were still quite happy to, to buy them at that price, the £5. Uh, and uh, I've actually finally sold all of them. So I think in the video I did last week, I had a few left. But the lady on the stall next to me, she, she bought the rest up. I had five left. At the end of the day, she says, I'll buy those off you for five or each. I'm like, yeah, that's great. So I've actually sold all of my IKEA sets now. They're all gone, so no, no more of those. So I'm sorry if you wanted to get hold of one of those at one of my next uh, Lego fairs, but I don't have any left. They've all gone, but they've they've, they've been all right for me, and they've, they've certainly generated a lot of interest on, on the on my tables as well. So I'll be ashamed not to be able to take any more of those. One more thing I wanted to talk about as well was uh, I took some Speed Champion sets with me. Um, so people have always said Speed Champions do well. And uh, I had a few Speed Champions from only two or three years ago. Um, and I took them with me and I got them at good prices off things like Amazon. Uh, and I had five different ones in total. Some of the uh, some of the original six wide ones and some of the uh, newer eight wide ones. And uh, I took five different sets. I took a, a Nissan, an Audi, there was a Porsche, a Ferrari and, uh, and uh, a McLaren and uh, the, yeah the purchase price for these was ooh, what are these of most of them were £12, £9 and one was £6 and I sell them all for between £20 and £35 um, so and these are particularly old sets as well so I actually I was really really pleased with how they did I've got quite a few more of these speed champions I've been buying more of them recently as well so um, so yeah again smaller sets they're not too big the, the overall price of them isn't particularly uh, high again my prices were probably fairly competitive but yeah really really pleased took five different speed champion sets and every one of them sold so really really pleased about that so just a couple more things to talk about. So um, while I'm at these Lego fairs, um, obviously um, people can pay me by card. I have a little uh, card reader which is from a company called Sum Up, and I bought this a few years ago now, and it cost me twenty pounds. Uh, and what's really really great is there are no sort of ongoing costs with the actual card reader. I just have to make sure it's charged up before I go, and I always have a, a practice run with my own credit card just to make sure it's all working and I've got all the updates up to uh, all, all sort of working in that and the telephone signal it, it, it runs off my telephone signal and it worked really really well no problems at all in this particular venue I've had problems before at other venues but this time it was absolutely fine and um, they take percentage so anything that I anything that anybody buys on this uh, uh, card reader um, I get charged 1.69 percent so it's not huge uh, I think all in all I think my charges for this for everything that I bought uh, was around about just under 50 pounds so that seems quite a lot but I did take quite a lot on the day um, and uh, it's just kind of you know 
I think I calculated that 87% of my sales uh, on this particular Lego fair were all by card and phone and, and watches as well. People have got watches and all sorts of things these days. Um, so yeah, most of my sales do come on card. So again, if you are ever going to be doing one of these uh, Lego fairs, wherever you are in the world, get yourself a card reader because the majority of people, especially if you're selling high-end items, they won't have two, three, four hundred pounds worth of cash with them. Uh, and yeah, you have to take a little bit of a hit with some fees, but it's definitely worth it. Um, I mean, I, I sort of, uh, I look at the fees that I, I had for this particular fair with the, the tables and the card reader and they're so much smaller than if you were to sell on eBay or something like that. I think eBay fees with um, the, the pay fees these days is around about 14, 15%, something like that. So fairly high. So, uh, you know, as a percentage wise, it, it's quite a small percentage that I'm paying towards these different costs. There are always going to be costs involved if you're selling anything, whether it's post and packing materials, whatever it is. Um, so uh, just bear that in mind. But yeah, if you are ever going to do one of these things, have a card reader because they're definitely worth their weight in gold. I wouldn't be without it. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this roundup. Uh, it's me waffling on. For, for 20 minutes or so so sorry if I've gone on a bit too long um, I really enjoy these Lego fairs I think there's something about sort of me that just likes being a shopkeeper and playing at Lego shop I think there's something quite uh, uh, quite good for me that I really enjoy that side of things as well and it's nice to meet so many people as well a lot of people obviously recognize me from my YouTube channel now and come up and say hello which is always really really nice uh, so I always appreciate that uh, and again hopefully I said I did manage to sell quite a lot of stuff so hopefully I do get my prices right uh, tell me what you think about my prices do you think I've, I've underpriced some things do you think some of the things I was trying to sell were a little bit too expensive um, oh, one thing I wanted to talk about before I go as well the sets that I didn't sell um, so as always there are sets that you take home with you and as always I took home with me my green grocer set uh, uh, which was uh, let's get the number here let's find the find the number where is my green grocer set 10185 is the green grocer set i was trying to sell that for uh, for 1200 pounds it didn't sell again uh, one day i'm sure someone will buy my lovely green grocer but uh, but not not that particular time um, and i also had to take home 10211 which was the uh, creator grand emporium another one of the modular buildings i had that on at uh, 420 pounds uh, again that didn't sell maybe maybe i look at my pricing for the next one uh, next event to see whether whether it's worth keeping to that price or maybe lowering it a little bit um, and I also uh, took with me the uh, VW Beetle I had that on at um, £105 so this really hasn't increased a lot in value it's been retired now for for three or four years it just hasn't really increased in value I think it's around about £75 uh, when it was originally um, released and I was trying to sell it for 105 and it didn't sell at 105 so I think they're the rare, fairly common probably not that popular for whatever reason it didn't sell there were other sets that I took with me that didn't sell as well but uh, that's always going to happen not too disappointed because there's always the next fair to sell them at so you're always going you're not going to never going to sell everything and I'm very very aware of that but I am just pleased with what I did sell anyway I hope you enjoyed this video thank you very very much for watching as always um, Keep an eye out for more uh, uh, videos like this. I'll be doing quite a few more Lego fairs over the next few uh, months. Uh, there's quite a few of them coming up. My next one is at the end of March in Milton Keynes. So if you live in and around the Milton Keynes area, I will be going back to Milton Keynes. Uh, I've been to one of, one of their events before. Uh, so uh, look forward to seeing you there. But if you can't make it to one of my events or you're not based in the UK, uh, do have a look out in your local area. I'm sure there will be uh, things popping up, especially during the summertime, uh, which, uh, which might be uh, of interest to you. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care. See you. Bye.